hi. First of all, my name is Sofia de la Garza. I am from Brownsville, Texas, a border town. And I have a four-year-old daughter who was diagnosed with vascular Ehlers-Danlos syndrome at the age of one. Vascular Ehlers-Danlos is considered a rare disease. It's a rare genetic condition and it affects the connective tissue in the body. Um, vets, p patients usually have fragile skin, easy bruising. They're prone to aortic and arterial aneurysms and dissections at a young age. They're also prone to like ruptures in the bowel. How I, I explain it to people is it's just they're very fragile because they produce faulty collagen. So collagen, as we know, is the body's glue and that glue does not serve its purpose. So that is what we're dealing with with vascular elder Stanlow syndrome. I'm a very emotional person, so if I cry, I welcome the tears now because it is a hard thing. It is a very difficult thing to process. And I don't I don't think no matter how many times I've been asked or no matter how many times I have to explain it, every time I have to like really think about it, it just it's like it I'm reliving it and it's fine. So she was diagnosed at the age of one, which is very abnormal. So if you don't have a past with vascular Ehlers-Danlos, you like if you don't have a family member who has maybe passed from it or or something, um, it's kind of really hard to diagnose. But when she was about five months, um, she was bruising. And I'm talking about like she wasn't crawling. She was kind of delayed in her milestones. So she wasn't even like sitting. Not She wasn't doing a lot. And I just started to know all these bruises on her little legs and on her back. And that was very alarming because I was her primary caretaker. So I was the one who was taking care of her every day and these bruises were just appearing. So I went into her pediatrician for a checkup and I said, you know what? This is really concerning my husband and I. Um, what do you think? And he was alarmed. He did say that it was very abnormal for that amount of bruising to be on a five-month-old, especially if she wasn't learning to crawl or doing any kind of movement like that. And so he referred us to a hematology clinic. His first thought was like a, a cancer, something related with the blood. So we went to a hematologist and they did all the testing. They tested once, they tested twice. And by the third time that we went back in, she says, I can't pinpoint it. There's everything comes back normal. Our her testing is normal. All her levels are normal, but it is abnormal the amount of bruising that she has. At this point, we've never heard about vascular Ehlers-Danlos. So if she did have other characteristics, they're not going through our head because I don't know. I don't know what it exists. So I have nothing else that I'm looking for within her body. Just the bruising. That's like, that's like the only sign we have. Right. And she says, you should go to genetics. Um, I think this is more something that they could maybe help you out to to figure out, right? So she referred us to genetics and we went with Driscoll Hospital here in Texas. And as soon as we walked in, um, he was a very wise man. He was a little bit older and he saw her and he said, okay. And he started mentioning like small lips, big, like little characteristics I had never put together and he said but then again dad is dad has a big head like he just started like making like light of it like so let's see and so he did mention vascular alert downloads but he also said it's very rare and so I really don't think it's that but he mentioned it so they tested for that and they tested for this for another syndrome I don't recall what it was the other syndrome I don't recall the name but it was more like something towards dwarfism so I waited um for that and then when he called us back in he said um she was diagnosed with vascular ehlers Stanlos. this was three years ago he hadn't diagnosed somebody since 1993 so that kind of shows you how rare it was really like when he said it he couldn't even believe that he was giving me that diagnosis and that's kind of the journey that we took to diagnose her we were lucky that we had healthcare providers that were listening to us and that were concerned with us because I think that's kind of it can be hard to find especially when you're a first-time mom and that you're freaking out about every little thing 
So that was very helpful in our journey. But yes, that's how we ended up with the diagnosis. So in my experience, I mean, yes, obviously you go in and you say, my daughter has this. And at first they're like, but I've had certain ex experiences where they're like, no, no, she doesn't like relax. And I'm like, no, I'm telling you, I have a genetic confirmation. So I just don't think it's much about teaching physicians to know, but letting them know to listen. Because it's really hard to go in with this type of diagnosis and then feel like you're not being heard because it's something so rare and something so life-threatening that it could sound not real. Like in my head, sometimes it it's not real. Like this can't be real. My daughter can't have that. Like this multi-systemic syndrome. So I would like physicians to know that if a parent goes in and says, my child has vascular Ehlers-Danlos syndrome, that child probably has vascular Ehlers-Danlos syndrome and that parent should be heard. I think that's that could be my best answer because obviously I could tell you that I wish physicians could know everything, the ins and outs about taking care of my daughter. But I think there's only like five doctors in the country that kind of focus on that. I think if I could tell physicians, it wouldn't be, I want you to know this, or I want you to know that. It's, I want you to listen to me. The most challenging part is that there are no symptoms, if that makes any sense. So she does have translucent skin, but it, I mean, it's a symptom that I guess I can live with. Her eyes are a little bit bigger. Her lips are like all the little things that you can see in a patient with vets. She has the thing that fills me with like anxiety and pressure is the lack of symptoms, if that makes any sense. I really don't know what's going on inside. And if you look at my child, you normal girl, she goes to school. She likes ballet. She's reached all her milestones. She she's very bright. She's a normal child. So that's the hardest part about being her ta her caregiver because she can have a normal life, but in reality she can't, but she doesn't have a disability. Like she's not in a wheelchair or she, she can walk, she can do everything. So that's like right now at her, at her age of four years old, it's really hard for her to comprehend when I say you can't do that, or we're going to stray away from that or stuff like that. And the hardest part about this syndrome is that today, so we just did an echo for her heart and it was perfect, but that was at 9 a.m. on a Tuesday. You don't know where you're going to get at 9 a.m. on a Wednesday because you can't tell and there's no, there's no treatment, there's no medication. So you're basically sent home with a life-threatening disorder that might or might not give you a sign that something fatal is going to happen. And that's the hardest part. They have a very special place in my heart. I've been working with the Marfan Foundation or they're, they've they been working with me and helping me since day one. Um, I remember when she got diagnosed, I did something that, out of my character. I went on Facebook and I looked up support groups and I found one. And they led me, that group led me to the Marfan Foundation. And the first year I kind of was in touch with people, but not really because it was very fresh to me. But after a year, I decided that it was time for me to start working towards a goal, which was funding research. And that's when I really started working with the Marfan Foundation. And when I started to meet everybody who works there and everybody who's great and wonderful and is just there to give people like me, mothers like me, and patients like my daughter, this kind of light and hope. Because there's nothing else working towards vascular ehlers Lowe's but the Marfan Foundation at least that I know of. And they do wonderful work. Right now in November, we have a charity gala. My husband and I are lucky enough, um, they invited us to be the chair of the chairs of the event. So that's wonderful. We have our annual walk for victory, which is amazing at, in Houston, where we get together with families that are going through the same thing and meet people with vascular understand lows, they give us a sense of community. They do conferences with doctors who can kind of show us how to better treat our kids and who can tell us where to go look for care. They also have like summer camps for kids with beds and Marfan syndrome. They do so much. 
And not only do they do so much in the funding aspect, but they do so much in the emotional aspect, which to me is so important because they just make you feel heard. They make you feel like there's a future for your child. It's just an incredible thing to be a part of and to witness. And they've done so much for me. If I'm being honest, if I wouldn't have found them, I don't know if I would be in the headspace that I'm right now, which is a very positive headspace, and I owe it all to them.